my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be telling you about all of the books that I read in the month of June. I have quite a few books to talk about which I'm actually pretty surprised by. Um, I felt like for a lot of this month I wasn't really in a particularly good reading mood. Like I found myself just kind of mindlessly watching TV for a lot of this month, um, which I'm trying very hard not to be um, frustrated with myself for. <laughs> but somehow I did manage to still read quite a few books. Some of these you will have heard about in like my mid-year freakout tag and my be best books of the year video, um, but quite a few of them I haven't spoken about yet, so let's just get into the book. I'm gonna start with three non-fiction books that I had a really valuable reading experience reading all three of these books quite close together, and they all come from the Penguin Modern series. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Martin Luther King Jr.'s Letter from Birmingham Jail such a powerful read and one that I don't really feel like I can do a huge amount of justice to. I think it is so important that people experience uh, Martin Luther King's words for themselves. This was written from a jail cell in Alabama and it was written on the margins of a newspaper and it was written in response to eight white clergymen who believed that the battle against racial segregation should be fought in the courts as opposed to the streets. It's an incredibly powerful read, unfortunately so much of it is still relevant today so I would definitely encourage you to pick this one up. The second book I'd like to talk about is Dark Days by James Baldwin. This book also deals with inequality, specifically racial inequality in America, and that's why I think it is it's really valuable to read these three books close together because it gives you quite a quite a broad understanding of different African American experiences. I was also really pleased to pick this one up during Pride Month and the same can be said for The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House by Audre Lorde. Audre Lorde describes herself as a black lesbian poet. I think it's something that she does wear with a lot of pride. A huge emphasis within these essays on the importance of having intersectional feminism. Feminism that includes all women women of colour and women of different class backgrounds, women of different sexualities, and it definitely highlights where white women can definitely fall short of making their feminism inclusive. My own feminism is something that I like to constantly reevaluate. Whether I'm doing as much as I can, whether I am including all different types of women in my discussions around feminism, whether feminism is a term that is actually still constructive and productive. As I'm coming to this essay collection as a very privileged white woman, I see it as a learning experience. Big kick up the bum and reminder to make sure my feminism is inclusive. But I also understand that coming to this collection as a learning experience is in itself incredibly privileged because for so many women the things that are discussed in this are living experiences not learning experiences. I would highly recommend reading the three of these quite close together. It was a really valuable reading experience for me and yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Quite differently, in June I picked up three of the books from the Hitchhiker's Trilogy of Four. So I read The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, Life, the Universe and Everything and So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. I had already read the first book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. These sci-fi stories were originally written as radio plays, I think, and then I think they were published as novels in the 1980s. I may not be entirely correct on that, but that's what I think. <laughs> um, and these were just massive comfort reads for me. You know, they're not books that you need to take particularly seriously. They're books that you can read um, quite casually and without like a lot of brain power. Essentially what happens across all four of these books is we follow a man named Arthur Dent, who is kind of like a typical, slightly bumbling English man. Um, after Earth is destroyed and he is rescued. He goes off to explore the universe and the books follow the various um, adventures and conundrums that he gets into during his explorations. You meet a whole host of wonderful, slightly bonkers characters. There are strange and wonderful situations that Arthur gets himself into and just the whole atmosphere of these books is so comforting and so lovely. I think I kind of, I read these books the way that I used to read as a child, like when you read with that pure just joy and love for turning the pages. And I think in my adult reading that's something that I often don't always experience. Sometimes I can feel a bit like, okay, what am I learning from this? Like what am I learning about writing in the world and how is this improving me as a person? But I didn't read like that as a child. When I was a child I read for, for I guess what Arthur is doing in these books, for going on strange and wonderful adventures 
across the whole universe. They're completely wonderful and I'm so glad that I read them this month. Another book that I read in June was Far From You by Tess Sharp and I thought this book was okay. In this book we look at Sophie's life and the timeline in this book skips around quite a lot. You get um, sections where she's like 17 and then sections when she's 14 then sections when she's 16 and you're kind of piecing her life and development together from those different sections. Sophie has had a lot of traumatic and difficult experiences in her life. Um, she was in a very serious accident which then led her to become um, addicted to her pain medication. The main focus on this novel however is the death of her best friend Mina. Mina was murdered and Sophie decides that it is up to her to find out what exactly happened to her because the police don't seem to be doing a very good job. In all honesty I don't think this book was particularly well written. I don't think the mystery was particularly well constructed. I found the reveal of what has happened to be quite disappointing. What I did appreciate about this book was the fact that the protagonist is bisexual, she has relationships with boys and girls, although strangely she has relationships with Mina and also Mina's brother. This isn't a book that's particularly left me thinking, it's not one that I hugely enjoyed but it was definitely a page turner. There are quite short chapters which makes it really um, quick and easy to fly through. So if you're looking for something to get through quite quickly, maybe you're feeling slightly unmotivated with your reading, which is how I felt when I picked up this book, um, then it may be worth picking up. It definitely helped me get out of a bit of a reading slump. The next book I'm going to talk about is A Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, which is a contender for my favourite classic of all time. I have one Jane Austen book left to read, but I'm pretty certain that this is going to be my favourite Jane Austen book of all time. This book begins with the Dashwood family and the complicated inheritance situation that surrounds um, the family property. Essentially what happens is Mrs Dashwood ends up widowed and she has to leave the house with her three daughters and move somewhere else. And the remainder of the novel is focused focused on two of the daughters, Eleanor and Marianne. They are very different people. Um, Marianne is the sensibility and Eleanor is the sense. Eleanor is one of those people that um, keeps this like strong, I can handle anything persona. Whereas Marianne is someone who definitely wears her emotions on her sleeve a lot more. We follow them socialising and meeting lots of different people and the different courtships that they end up in. We follow their heartbreaks and how each sister deals with them differently. This book was so good for me. I guess the way for me to explain why I loved this book so much is to speak broadly a little bit about classics. I think sometimes people wonder why a classic book becomes a classic book and yes it is to do with um, social significance of the time, it sometimes has to do with fantastic writing styles, but why classics become classics is because all these years later, this was written in I think it was 1811, all these years later the themes are still so incredibly relevant. You know all of these years later I think it is so important that people but especially young women understand that yes heartbreak is horrible to go through but you will be able to pick yourself up and the people around you, your sisters, will be able to pick you up and you'll feel better eventually. <laughs> I really really love this book. I think what's also fascinating about classics is that, you know, another reader might take something totally different from this book and give an entirely different reason for why they adored it and if I had read it at a different time there might have been an entirely different reason why I loved it. The next book I'm going to talk about is a poetry collection and that is Real Grown Up Women by Samantha Borer. I was convinced I was going to absolutely love this collection but I was slightly disappointed in it. Two poems that I did particularly enjoy from it um, were an anti-love poem and the title poem uh, Real Grown Up Women. As I said I really expected to love this collection, it's something um, that on paper it sounds like it ticks a lot of boxes for me, you know, um, it's a book about womanhood and it speaks quite openly about like women's bodies, but I felt like a lot of this collection was something that I'd kind of just heard before. I didn't think there was anything particularly stand out or unique from it, both in terms of actual content and also poetic style. I feel like this is the kind of poetry that would be a lot more impactful and powerful um, if read aloud. I think it's definitely like slam poetry style, but I don't think um, 
that impact has translated onto the page very well. In saying that, I saw a huge amount of potential in this collection, and I would be interested in reading anything that this poet produces in the future. The next book I'm going to talk about is After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, if you've seen me speak about this book in any other videos, you'll know I don't really want to talk about it that much because I had such a massive personal reaction to it. But essentially this book is about a married couple who decide that they are going to split up for a year and not have any contact for a year and then reevaluate their situation. Keep thinking about whether or not this book was a good book for me to read at the time that I read it, um, but I am glad that I read it. I thought it was a really fantastically written book that presents a number of different outlooks and approaches to romantic relationships. While our protagonist feels one way about romance and um, how couples function, the other people in her life, like um, her siblings and her mother and her grandmother, have different outlooks on that and I think it was quite a interesting and broad look at that topic. And as I said, I, it was just written superbly and I definitely want to check out all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's other books. The next book I read was Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This book is set in the 1960s and it weaves together the lives of three different characters. Their lives are all swept up in the turbulence of Biafra's struggle to establish an independent republic within Nigeria and it looks at all of the violence that occurred as a result of that. I think this novel is incredibly important and I think it really highlighted to me the amount of violence and war there has been in the world that I just didn't have a clue happened. It's an historical story that history has just blotted out because the people that wrote history decided it wasn't important enough. I think this book also breaks down that idea that there is like one homogenous African experience when really that's not the case. You know, like in any country, there are incredibly diverse cultural experiences within one country. That's definitely something that this book highlights and I just, I cannot emphasize enough how important I think this book is and how it shows very personal, intimate stories while highlighting the wider societal implications of the political climate. I don't always get along with this author's writing style, that's definitely not what I come to her books for. Sometimes I find myself getting a bit lost in it, and I sometimes feel that there are too many characters for me to keep track of, but in saying that it doesn't stop it from being a phenomenal book and one that I would highly recommend. The next book I'm going to talk about is Mules and Men by Zora Neale Hurston. Now I read Zora Neale Hurston's short stories about a year ago? It would have been like just over a year ago. And I devoured them. I loved them so much. I thought they were phenomenal. So I definitely wanted to try out some more of her writing. However, this one left me slightly disappointed. For quite a while it wasn't published because people didn't think it was of publishable quality and I kind of understand why. However, in saying that, I do think Zora Neale Hurston is an author that history has forgotten and it is really important that we rediscover her writing and its importance. And that's kind of what she's doing herself in this book. She's rediscovering an African-American cultural history, she's looking into African-American mythology and the origins of that. Zora Neale Hurston also inserts her own experiences within to the mythology, so I thought that that was really interesting as well. But I felt a bit like this book didn't know exactly what it was. I don't think the way that she weaved between the stories of how she began to collect the mythology and the actual mythology itself was particularly well done. I felt like her voice was very much absent from this book, which I guess it's because she was handing over the storytelling to other people, but I guess when I came to this book because I loved her writing style, and for a lot of it that wasn't there, it did leave me slightly disappointed. But in saying that, I did learn a whole bunch about African American mythology. I think if that's something that you are interested in, this book is a fantastic, if not one of the best sources. And the final book that I completed in June was The Girl Who Soared Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two by Catherine M. Valente. Like The Hitchhiker's Guide book, this is such a comfort read for me. Stepping into this wonderful series where we follow a, our protagonist who is called September, we follow her as she is whisked off to fairyland in each novel. The strange and fantastical things that happen to her. 
like many people I do compare these novels to the Alice novels and I think also if you're a fan of the film Labyrinth with David Bowie in it then you would also enjoy the whimsical and strange nature of what happens in fairyland and while these books are designed for children I think you get so much from them as an adult reader. There is so much, so much depth to what's going on and Catherine M. Valenti has this incredible way to put things into words that I've never been able to articulate before. These are such like quotable novels as well. Those articulations, those little nuggets of wisdom, those lines that profoundly touched me in this book are lines that I'm going to be thinking about for a really long time. I think there are two more books left in this series and I don't have copies of those yet, but rest assured I'm definitely going to finish this series. So that is it, they are all the books that I completed in June. I am in the middle of reading a few others which I will show you very quickly. We have Perfect by Rachel Joyce. I haven't got very far into this one, I don't know why, but when I picked it up I couldn't get gripped by it. But I'm definitely gonna keep trying with it. I absolutely love Rachel Joyce's writing. I've read two of her books before. And I'm also in the middle of reading these two. So Stone Mattress by Margaret Atwood and The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender. But I will talk about those in my July wrap up. I am moving over the next few days and I probably will have already moved by the time you see this, but I am doing quite a bit of pre-filming. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna talk about today. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, what was your favorite read of June. Let me know down below and I will talk to you guys in my next video.